Yo, what up everybody? Cardboard Moles is what you welcome. It is time to do 2018 Donner's Football. Four boxes from a case. Number three. Alright. Here are the four boxes. And away we go on this journey called Donner's. Dan Chris Fitz, that donut looks pretty fire. That looks pretty tasty. Let me see. I see... What are those? Captain Crunch. What is that? Frosted Flakes. Lucky Charms. Fruity Pebbles. What is that? Fruity Pebbles? Dude, if that's not diabetes, I don't know what is. But I'll, I'll gladly, gladly end it all with that. Where where they do that at? Uh, Chris Fitz? Is that around your neighborhood or something? If so, send, 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 send us one. Me and Jason will split it. Is it Voodoo Donuts? Dude, I don't know, but my boy sent me a picture. Check, check this thing out. It's quite possibly the greatest donut ever of life. Look at that. It's from a dinner Instagram page? I don't know, but it is freaking insane. <clears throat> I don't know what it is. My boy's seen it on Instagram, so he doesn't know where it is either. Or where it's from. Some evil genius created that thing. The the create probably well not the craziest but like I've had one of those Krispy Kreme burgers before. And I'm still recovering from it. Where instead of buns, they replace the buns, the bread with Krispy Kreme donuts. Oh my god. It's so good. I had it at the fair a few years ago. And I'm still digesting it. Bacon maple bars? What is that? I don't even know. I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to picture that. What what is that? I got the bacon part. If I'm not mistaken, maple is like syrup. I don't know. They have maple bacon donuts. Those are, dude, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever tried that. Maple bacon anything. I don't, I don't even know what a maple bar is. I can't do the bacon, though. I cannot eat pork. Which is a, uh, a devastating blow to me. My, 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 my body cannot handle the, the pork. So I, I can't eat pork and I can't uh, have uh, any dairy products. It is, it is heartbreaking. Heart syrup is a maple bar like candy. Huh, interesting. They well, I mean, I don't, I, I don't. They may have maple bars in Florida. I'm just, I'm not too big of a candy person. Like I'm not, you know what I mean. Like I, uh, I have my certain candies that I like, like M and M's and Snickers and stuff like that. But I, I don't actively like. Oh, let me find, you know, some something different. Dude, no pork, no dairy. It's. It's just one of those things. Stephon Gilmore to 25 for the Patriots. You know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. The dairy is the hardest one. The pork, whatever. I, you know what I mean? I, I, I could deal without pork. 
like you know there's turkey bacon you know i'll figure it out the aqueous test for quan alexander bucks i can't I, I could eat seafood but i don't like seafood i am not a fan of seafood the only way i'll eat seafood if it's deep fried and that's because i can't smell it I'm one of those people. I smell my food before I eat it. And if it smells bad, I'm not going to eat it. Period. Tremaine Edmonds, he going to eat anything to 50 for the bills. Not a fan of seafood, but if it's deep fried, I could eat it all day. Richard Sherman, damn. 6 of 10 for the Seahawks. It's a shame he don't play for the Seahawks no more, but that's a nice card. Got the autograph and the little two-color patch there on the side. Number six of ten. That's so sweet. Oh, well. The top loader being messed up is not cool. <clears throat> Dude, this case had the... This case also had a Russell Wilson's uh, autograph, I think. I think a couple days ago I pulled a Russell Wilson Dominator autograph. That was pretty sick. The Old Dirty Bastard is my favorite voodoo donut. They, they named the donut after ODB? Old Dirt McGurt? It's a round donut covered in peanut butter, crushed Oreos on top, and then a chocolate drizzle. Oh, my God. Mike Allstott, press proof for the uh, Buccaneers. My mouth is watering just reading that. John Kelly, press proof for the Rams. What's up, Jason? Oh, here's a... Oh, a passing the torch business here. We got Darius Geis of the Redskins on the back with a three-color patch. And Clinton Portis on the front with a three-color patch. Number 10 of 10 for the Redskins. That's a nice-looking card. I like these passing the torch. These are pretty cool-looking cards. Um, this, however, is the wrong top loader. So let's, let's get that out of there. And let's slide this over here. There you go. That's a big one. Barely fits in the 180. Ha, <laughs> that's what she said. That's nice. 10 of 10 Redskins. That's pretty sweet. It's a shame Geis is out for the year. But he can come, uh, come out like gangbusters next year. Ron Jaworski to 400 Eagles. Charles Woodson Packers. We have LaShawn McCoy to twenty five die cut for the Bills. Who's been somewhat of a disappointment this season. From a fantasy football standpoint, uh, I'm pretty sure. Well, of course it translates to real life because the Bills. I don't think the Bills have. Well, the Bills won one game so far this year, I think. Against the Vikings. <clears throat> Alright, that's one box down. Two more to go.
Is there any baseball on tonight as far as like postseason baseball? Does that start today or, or what? Is there a, oh, there's a, a wild card game today. Rockies Cubs. Is that like winner take all kind of deal? Well, I don't watch the baseball that often, so I have no idea. But I will do uh, my due diligence and watch the postseason this year. I only ever watch like the World Series. Uh, yes, Chris Fitz, that's exactly what happened. So he'll he'll come on like later tonight. Ah, so the winner moves on. Gotcha. It's just a one-off. Winner take all. To play the Brewers. That game is at eight o'clock. Rockies Cubs. The NL Wild Card game. Acuna and the Braves are in the playoffs. That's always nice. Should help boost the rookie sales. Exactly, Chris Fitz. Especially if he if he if he can ball out, like first at bat hits a home run, first pitch, boom, through the roof. I think it should, it's just going to be an interesting postseason. Yeah, that's right. Braves have two stud rookies, Albies and uh, Acuna. I'm excited to see the playoffs. Yeah, I, I like baseball. I really do. I just can't sit through an entire season worth of baseball. Especially when my Marlins suck as much as they do. But I, I definitely do watch postseason baseball. Rockies are in their third time zone in three days. Oh, man. So they must be all kinds of jet lagged or whatever. Ah, they're professionals. They'll be all right. Second box, Jenna Samuel, 76 Steelers. How about the rookie Mahomes? Well, not a rookie. He's in his second year, but redshirt rookie, I guess, if you want to call him that, or whatever. Mahomes balled out last night, man. I don't know. That kid might be for real. To go into a mile high, 10 down in the fourth quarter, lead them boys to a dub. That's kind of big time. LaMelo slapped some dude yesterday. I, I need I need video. I need video evidence. Or fake news, uh, Chris Fitz. If I don't have video, it's fake news. Antonio Brown, not fake news. The press proof for the Steelers. Oh man, this Saturday, isn't this Saturday Khabib and McGregor? To 100, Jordan Howard of the Bears. He's been a disappointment for me. He did uh, little to nothing this week. Well, I got a W though, that's all that counts. But he has been a disappointment for me this year. I want to say I drafted Howard like in the fourth round or something. Sammy Watkins to 39 Chiefs. Mm. 
that's gonna be a good one, man. McGregor and Khabib going at it. Especially with their fighting styles, man. Khabib is just ultra aggressive. And McGregor's one of those uh he, he likes to counter. It should be it should be a very good I, I'm I'm hoping for a good one. I don't know what the I don't know what the rest of the card looks like though. Troy from Magali to fifty for the Broncos. I think isn't there something else going on on Saturday? I could have sworn there's something else happening Saturday. I'll check that out when I have a chance, Chris Fitz. Michael Gallup to 99, the rookie autograph for the Cowboys. That's nice. Cowboys throwing the ball to Zeke. They should have been doing that. That guy's a beast. Press proof, Tom Brady Patriots. Still dominating the Dolphins in Foxborough. Much to my dismay. So LaMelo slapped the dude for like no reason. Who's LaMelo? Isn't LaMelo like the, the youngest? I think. Kyle Lau, letter to 100 for the Giants. Alright, so maybe I'm losing my mind. But I did not see a relic come out of that box. Nope, no relic came out of there. But we did get the autograph to Michael Gallup. So there's that. The box very clearly states one auto, one relic per box on average. So it's not guaranteed. And before you send me the hate mail, it very clearly states on average. It's not guaranteed, y'all. Hopefully one of these other boxes makes up for it. My man Frank Hiller, what's up, dude? I haven't seen you in forever, yo. Hope all is well, my dude. Yeah, Michael, that's what my boy on Breakers is telling me right now. Lamelo slapped some dude. Lamelo Ball ejected from international game after slapping opponent in the face. Oh, I'm all about that. How did that happen? LaMelo driving, got fouled. Oh, that's why he slapped him, because homeboy, like, hit, like pat him on the back. Let's do Tomas. Sounds good, Frank. Good job. Yeah, the one, the one dude, like, well, LaMelo kind of, LaMelo kind of instigated it first. He pushed him first. Oh, wait, this is a Team USA game? Oh, hell no. That's not a good look, bro. So, LaMelo pushed him first. Then, homeboy pat him on the on the back of the head like, all right. And then, LaMelo's like, nah, dog. Chino Hills. We don't play that. Slapped him in the face. And then, we got one of those, situ one of those uh, as Jalen Rose likes to call him, hold me back. Where nobody's really going to do anything. But, you know, oh, hold me back. You know, pretend like, let's at least pretend like we're going to fight. Hold me back. That is pretty hilarious. But I, I, I will say this. LaMelo Ball started it with that push after the foul. There's no need for that. It's booty cheeks. Ah, okay, the JBA USA. It's it definitely booty cheeks. I thought he was like on the Olympic team. I was like, damn, LaMelo. Okay, I see you. Freaking the Ukraine teaching you how to play bad. Like, I don't even, is he, whatever. Who cares? Lonzo made it to the NBA, and that's all that matters.
Oh, listen, LaMelo is very talented, very talented. I just, I don't understand what the purpose was of him playing. I mean, I, I get it. I kind of get it. Having him play like semi-professional basketball against grown men in a foreign country, I guess. But my thing is, I think the NCAA, as far as competition-wise, is way better than professional sports, you know, professional basketball overseas. But whatever. You know, as long as they got that, that, that one and done, you know, like situation in college basketball, which I think is a stupid rule, they should go like all the way with that. They should be like, you got to spend at least, at least three years in college before you can go to the, jump to the NBA because at least that way, Boom. The player is going to develop for three years. You're, gonna, you're really going to skip your fourth year to just go to the NBA? At that point, you got a decision. Finish school one more year or go to the NBA. You'll be, more, you'll be better prepared for the NBA because you, your body will develop. Hopefully, you'll, your game will improve. So there's that. Or just be done with the one and done rule. If you want to go to the NBA at 18, be my guest. Some of the greatest basketball players of all time came straight out of high school. Kevin Garnett, LeBron James, just to name a couple. So uh, uh, that, that, that rule is, I know what that rule is all about. It's all about money. It's all about giving the NCAA a little bit more monies. But I don't know, it's, it's one of those things. Frank Gore to 25 for the Dolphins. You know, college football, too. Like, if you feel like you can play in the NFL at 18 years old, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> so, 100, Michael Irvin, Cowboys. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, Fitz. You know, if you think you can make it to the pros at 18, fresh out of high school, go for it. Otherwise, at at least two years in college, at least. Well, Ryan, at that point, then then so be it, man. You know they're not going to get drafted. So at that point, you know kids are going to they realize, oh snap, you know they're not drafting high school kids like they used to. I better take my ass to college. And if you think you got it like that, where you could just be one and done, you know, just go straight to the pros from high school, then, you know, go for it, man. I'm, I'm all about that equal opportunity. Gronkowski press proof Patriots. It's all about money at the end of the day. The NCAA got to get paid. And that's what that's about. Brandon Erlacher, 54 for the Bears. Jordan Howard, the Bears. And college basketball is a bit of a joke because of that we have so many players just one and done so you don't get to see some of the great college basketball like we used to back in the day you know where you had duke and north carolina kansas syracuse like powerhouse you know colleges and, and now it's like oh kentucky you know they're, they're always going to be in it because freaking the one and dones, just hey, they all just want to go to Calipari or whatever the hell his name is. Guaranteed going to the NBA. Alright, I don't think we've hit an auto yet. 
So where you at? Well, I see a relic for Joe Thomas of the Browns to 125. Ooh, you must have at least an associate's degree to come to the NBA. Interesting. Mike is sick. He's a 499 auto for the Dolphins. Yeah, I've never been a fan of the one and done rule. I say, I say they go like real balls to the wall with that. Make it at least two years, at least. You gotta play two years college ball, and then you can go to the pros. Or if you're gonna do it, then freaking do it. Four years required. Four years of college uh, basketball. Daniel Sorensen for the Chiefs. But listen, let's be honest, man. Most most of the kids, they don't want an education. They just want to play their one year, ball out, and then go to the pros. They don't, they don't care about, you know, a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree. Who cares about that when you stand to make millions of dollars for dribbling a basketball? Right, Michael Captree? To 50 for the Ravens. All right. It's come down to the last box. Don't they kind of do that already, though, Chris Fitch, for the rookies? At least, I, I, I'm pretty sure they do that in the NFL, where the rookies, I'm pretty sure they do it in the NBA, too. Where they have, like, it's like a rookie symposium or something like that, where people go and talk to them and be like, hey, listen, man, you know, you guys are freaking millionaires now, but, you know, be careful how you spend your money, blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, listen, face, listen, that, that's on them. They made a choice. You made a choice. You got to live with it. Yeah, I'm with you, Chris Fitz. Yeah, like baseball drafts their kids straight out of high school, puts you know, and puts them in in low A or or whatever it is that they do. You got to go through the ranks. Done opening packs here. I don't know, man. Re requiring athletes to have, like, a degree or have an education. I mean, let's be honest. Them boys don't care about education. They're just trying to ball. They're just trying to play basketball, football, whatever. If they really cared about being educated, then they would get educated. It's that simple. That's why I think they should just get done with that one-and-done rule. If you think you can make it out of high school, go for it. Otherwise, take your ass to college. Or go overseas and try to be the next Stephon Marbury or, or whatever. You know, I don't like all those rules. Oh, you got you to gotta spend at least a year in college. Oh, you got to have at least an associate. Like, no. I don't care. You just want to play. You just want to knock somebody out. 
You don't need an associate's degree to tackle. You don't need a bachelor's degree to freaking, you know, catch a football. Dude, Ryan, listen, it is what it is, bro. Like, it's not like we're talking about doctors or lawyers or or, or teachers or, or, you know what I mean? Like, we're talking about sports. We're talking sports. Like, seriously. Like, come on. And, it, and it's like Face Card says, dude, most of these kids come from, uh, you know, from, from poor families. Whether you just, you got to jump on an opportunity as, as soon as you get it. So, my thing, like, I don't know, man. I don't know, dude. It's 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 one of the like it's, it's just it's one of those touchy subjects. You know what I mean? I'm all for if you think you can make it at 18, go for it. You know how many multi billionaires are there in the world that don't even have a, uh, an associate's degree? There's a few out there. Dude, there's billionaire, there's millionaires, billionaires that, that didn't even finish high school. Like, come on. Doug Baldwin a 100 for the Seahawks. I'm not saying education is not important. I'm not saying that at all, but we're talking sports here. Bradley Chubb to 75 for the Broncos. I wonder if he has an associate's degree in tackling. Could you imagine? <laughs> yes, uh, I have an I have a I have an associate's degree in uh, in tackling. Darius Leonard or the co oh really oh you're qualified come 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 please come this way. That's see now that's now that is just like a life lesson at that point, Ryan. Well, you know, you know, once you're done balling, what are you going to do with your time? You know, that, see, that's something else there. Alrighty. You got Bruce Irvin, press proof for the readers. Marcus, probably not. Just to be honest with you, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna focus on things that I can actually break tonight, brother. Cameron Jordan, 94 Saints. I do believe we will be live early tomorrow, since it's a release day. Mike Evans of the Bucks to 400. Ah, uh, uh, Marcus, I didn't say all that. No, hell no. What you got to call out for, dog? Go get your paper stacks. Just like watch me on your phone, man. <laughs> That's the beauty of this, is you can just watch me on your phone. Amari Cooper, two-color patch to uh, 10 for the Raiders. Michael Gallup, another autograph for the Cowboys rookie. This one to $4.99. Cowboys did well getting two autos. Aaron Rodgers, press proof for the Packers. And we're almost done. Jerry Rice to 50 for the Niners. That is going to do it for the break. All right, let's recap this thing. 
So we have an Amari Cooper, 5 of 10 for the Raiders. Joe Thomas to 125 Browns. And a Clinton Portis, 10 of 10, passing the torch with Darius Geis on the back for the Redskins. Very nice. Autos, we have Michael Gallup of the Cowboys, 499. Mike Kosicki, Dolphins, 499. Another Michael Gallup for the Cowboys. This one's a 99. And a Richard Sherman, 6 of 10 for the Seahawks. Very nice. And that was the break. Thank you, everybody. We'll get it out to you.